family, Alex Kennedy here again, and I am once again joined by our Senior Vice President for Instruction and Provost, Dr. Martha Lou Smith. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure, Alex. Um, we, this time, we are asking Dr. Smith your questions about the fall semester. Now, I know there have been a lot of questions mm -hmm. since our original announcement came out last week about all the different plans that are um, going forward for the fall. And so since that time, we've been gathering these questions, these frequently asked questions, and we're going to pose them to you today. Okay. So our first question today will be, what will classrooms look like for the fall? Okay, well, the first thing I have to say about that is there is no one answer for that. Sure. We have so many different types of classes at Pearl River that I think that it's really important that we recognize those differences as I try to answer that question. So let's think about classes along these lines. You have your allied health classes, you have career and technical classes, you have academic classes, you also have adult ed and workforce classes. The, the three that I want to address right now are going to be allied health, career and technical, and academic classes. So each one of those right there will need to make sure, first of all, do you know who you are? Do you know if you are in an <laughs> academic this class? Is true. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of questions. What is an A&P class? A&P classes are academic classes. Allied health classes are the classes that you had to be admitted to for one of the programs. You know, OTA, physical therapy, nursing, all of those are allied health classes. Then your career and technical classes. That might be drafting, it might be automotive, it might be HVAC, electronics. So think about where your classes are in terms of those three definitions when you wanna say, what will our classes look like this fall? Each one of those situations will be defined by the instructors in those areas. So for example, in your allied health programs, those programs are really driven by some accreditation requirements. The, the students must meet a certain number of hours and have clinicals a certain number of hours. So it's very important that those students follow certain guidelines that perhaps the students in our academic area will not have to follow. So I can elaborate more on that as we go through some of the other questions. Sure. All right, so um, as far as what the instruction in the classroom is gonna look like for the mm -hmm. fall, what different types of implementation uh, are the instructors going to use to make okay. this accessible yeah. for students? Good question. And again, remember, it's going to vary depending on each kind of situation. In our career technical classes, the, the classes can be thought of as lecture and lab just about for every class. Okay. So for lecture classes, they'll be able to do those classes in a hybrid format. And for the lab, they'll come and spread out that lab time over a, over a longer period of time so that you don't have as many students in one place as you might normally would. Okay. This allows for social distancing and allows for us to, to, to say, okay, let's clean up our spaces, let's sanitize and disinfect. Um, in the Allied Health, it might be that those students are in small enough groups because the number in those classes has to be limited. So those students might all be able to come at one time and then decide from there with their teacher how they'll arrange some of those lecture times. Again, the clinical times that they have to meet are typically required and so those instructors are very careful to make sure that the students are meeting all of those times. And that's face to face but those instructors are also very limited based on what our clinical facilities will allow them to do right now. Perhaps the students are supposed to be going to a nursing home and that nursing home will not allow those students in. So our clinical instructors are really working hard to make sure that those students are able to have those experiences, yet they have to do it within the parameters set by those facilities. Sure. Now our academic classes, Again, some of those even vary depending on what it might be. A science class with a lab will vary from an English class. But on the whole, here's the kind of thing you can expect. When students go to class the first week, they will come up with a plan with that teacher because the teachers are working very diligently to create plans so that only a certain amount of students will be in a classroom space at one time. 
This is just strictly for purposes of social distancing. However, during this process, the teachers are also working to create situations to accommodate students who either don't feel comfortable being in the classroom amongst other students or who perhaps suddenly get sick and aren't able to be there all the time. So the way the students, the teachers are arranging their classes, they're creating it in Canvas. Students can log in, they can see the information. However, even if a student can't be in class all of the time, they will still be able to log in and watch the instructor do a lecture. So it will be the next best thing to sitting there. Yes. It will, there, there's a name for that, and if you want to go Google it, there's lots of information about it, and it's called HyFlex, H-Y-F-L-E-X. But HyFlex is not something I can touch. HyFlex is a type of teaching and learning. I can do it with my phone, because a teacher can set up a phone on a tripod in their classroom, and they can log in and then let other students log in and be able to watch the lecture at the same time that those in the classroom are. I can do it with my laptop so that I can literally sit that laptop in front of me as the teacher, students are logging in, I can see them, works either way. However, in order to give teachers more flexibility, Dr. Brewwood has been so supportive of committing some of our monies to purchasing equipment that is going to enhance our ability to use the HyFlex method. So this, think of this technology as just instructional technology and it will involve things like some large TVs in the front of the room so that the students who are in the classroom see the material and then the teacher shares information and it can be seen on those TVs or it can be seen at home on the computer by a student sitting at home or in a parking lot somewhere, wherever they chose to be, to not be in that classroom that might be overly crowded. So a lot of options there. There will be some cameras and all of that equipment is in the process of being installed now. It is a big job to get all of that installed because as you can imagine, every school in the country is trying to purchase this equipment right now. Sure, sure. <laughs> so we're working hard. That sounds like such exciting technology that mm -hmm. students that are coming to Pearl River and returning to Pearl River will be able to take advantage of. And just as I'm thinking about it, it seems like something that is going to be valuable even beyond um, the COVID-19 um, situation. I mean, this opens up doors for being able to learn in different um, in different situations beyond what we're experiencing right absolutely, now. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it really does give a little give a lot of options. Uh, we've tried to install this equipment, or we are trying to install it, we're, like I said, we're in the process, in some areas that, um, not just classrooms, but areas that are larger, but that can also be used as classrooms. So okay. we'll be able to multitask those spaces, so to speak, and, you know, meetings and things like that can be, be conducted in those spaces. But we're very excited about the opportunities this is going to give us. We will have this equipment at all three of our locations and are hopeful to also use it within adult ed and workforce. That's very exciting. We're looking forward to that. So our next question, um, moving kind of in the direction of on-campus learning. Mm -hmm. um, so masks are required on campus. Indeed they are. Question. Yes. And I, 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 will, I will not lie to you. I, I, I struggle with my mask. I have bought some to put around my neck because I was walking out of my office and forgetting to pick up a mask. So I have some around my neck. Now, as I walked over here, I carried my jacket and I did not have my mask on my face, but I had it around my neck so that I could pull it up if I encountered anyone as I walked over. Did, did it have anything to do with the heat and humidity? Slightly, okay. yes, okay. yes, welcome to South Mississippi. <laughs> um, I, I do want to put it out there that as people are walking around outside, we're, we're not gonna go up and say, hey, where's your mask? But it's, it's just sort of polite. You, you have to be considerate of others around you. So if you are with someone in an outdoor space, then you really need to be considerate of those other folks and wear your mask. Um, inside spaces, yes, you need to wear your mask. Uh, especially as you are in classroom spaces. You know, someone asked the question about when you sit down in the classroom and 
and you're sitting there and you're being still, can you take your mask off? Well, I really discourage that. I, I think you need to wear your mask when you're in those situations because unless you're in that room by yourself, there's still, there's still the chance that in that closed in space that things could happen. So it's very, it's just really important that we be considerate of the larger community around us. Absolutely. Now I will include that because our teachers are um, encouraging the mask wearing and they will be wearing masks, we are very aware that some students may be slightly hearing impaired and need to read lips in order to pay attention in class. So we have purchased some face shields that instructors will be able to wear. The instructors will be able to socially distance from the front of a classroom, but as they wear their face shield, they can take their mask down and students will be able to read their lips if need be. That's great. Our next question is, if a student does get COVID-19, how will the college handle that process, that situation? Okay, well, the first thing we're going to say is, we need you to go home. Do not be here on campus with us. Sure. No, we, we respect that you want to keep learning, but you can't do it here on campus. Well, that's where we refer back to the previous conversation about HyFlex. Uh, that HyFlex pedagogy or way of teaching literally is what will allow that student to go home, recover from the virus, and never miss a beat with his or her classes. They can log in and watch their lectures, they can uh, complete their work online, they can participate in discussions online. So all of that will be available to that student. Now, we'd love to think that the student would be able to never stop working and continue. Somebody's going to feel badly enough somewhere that they need a nap. So it's, it's okay if you can't keep up right away. As our teachers are creating this information online, it's there so they're ready to work with students to help the students catch up. Sure. Now, as our students are on campus, and uh, we, you know, we always encourage students at our ROAR sessions to get involved, and how important it is for students to really get involved and what a difference that makes on their experience at the college as a whole. Mm -hmm. And so, speaking on that, what is the likelihood of student activities being able to move forward for the fall? Okay, well, as I answer that question, I told someone the other day that I need to get a t-shirt <laughs> that says everything I say is prefaced by the phrase as of right now. Of course, yes. Um, as we talk about our protocols that we have put in place and that we are constantly working to revise, we tell everyone, please remember that everything we're saying is as of right this minute. So as of right now, yes, we will have student activities this fall but they may not look quite the same as they have in the past. Students are going to be discouraged from congregating in small groups on campus without the proper social distancing involved and the masks being worn. So we are expecting there to still be activities on campus. It's hard to have a college life on with your campus and your students without some of those activities. So we do expect to have some, but students need to expect some modifications. Sure. Will students still be living in the dorms? Indeed they will. Uh, in a couple of weeks, we will have our dorm move-in weekend. This is where I need to make sure that you, as students, know to always check your student email. I'll say that more than once before this conversation is over, I'm sure. but. The uh, housing office has sent emails to every single dorm student saying specifically when you plan to, when you will be allowed to move in. And I don't just mean the date, they've given specific times and dates when students will be moving in and they've given directions. So make sure you read those directions. They've told you where to go to move in. They've told you what that process will be like you're only allowed to bring one person with you. The whole purpose of which is to create situations where we don't have quite as many people bumping into one another. A normal dorm move-in weekend is as fun for those of us who work here as it is for the students because we usually come out in mass and just start grabbing things and helping students move all of their uh, possessions in from their cars 
And what normally would have taken uh, three hours takes 30 minutes and we have it all done for you. We can't do that now because we have got to respect your things and we don't need to be touching and grabbing onto your things. So we're trying to be very careful about all that. Do know that as students are checking in for the dorms, they'll be given like a little a care package that will have some hand sanitizer, a face mask, and things like that, just, just to help students get started if they came without some things. That's great. So I know that as we're doing a Facebook Live here that we are primarily <coughs> speaking to parents or to those that are supporting a Wildcat that will be joining us in the fall. And so as these parents or support systems are thinking about those children's futures or those students' futures for the um, fall, what if that, that student that they're supporting has a health problem that might put them at a higher risk for COVID-19? Well, in our protocol document where we have our housing information, we've specifically addressed that. Um, living in a dorm can be one of the most exciting things that students do, and many of them are doing that because they're so ready to get out of the house. <laughs> They are freshly graduated from high school and they are ready to sprout their wings and try new things in life. And honestly, that's what college is. They should be learning and trying new things. However, if you have a student who has some reason that their immune system is compromised or maybe they have a really high, um, they, they have, they're really prone to asthma attacks and things like that, you know, we, we are telling you, we encourage you to give it a lot of consideration before moving into the dorm. Regardless of the things that we try to do on behalf of the college and for your students, there's only just so much we can do. And so while we're saying to students, put your mask on when they're in the hallway, put your mask on when you come out of that room, do this, do that. They're still 18, 19, 20 year olds. And um, so we, we encourage you as parents to really have a hard conversation with your child. Now, the other side of that is, while we definitely are not trying to run anyone off because we love it when students are in our dorms, that's, you know, that, that just sort of, that gives the shot of life around here for so many things. Uh, if you do make that decision that you want to change and not be in the dorm this fall, it would be so helpful if you could let us know sooner rather than later. The housing office, they actually have a waiting list of people who'd like to be in the dorms. So if you could let us know that change of decision now, it would be so very helpful, helpful to them. Absolutely. Now, um, I know that we've seen this question come up a couple of times on uh, Facebook and in other places. Will classes go back all online like last semester? Okay, and the answer to that is I really have no idea, but we hope not. The plan is to finish out the semester face-to-face -face or using the high-flex technology that we have. Now, some of our classes will be online already, so those classes will rock along as normal, but if we have to go back to the online like we did in the spring, uh, our teachers are super prepared. They are ready to make that they're ready to flip the switch, as they say, so that they can be online. And uh, our students should not miss too much at that point. The students should already know how to log in. The students should be very familiar with using Canvas. So all of those things are important to learn up front so that if that moment arrives, they'll be ready to go. Great. Uh, and our final question today is, how will my student know what to do for that first week of class? Okay, well, remember I said something a minute ago about email. Well, uh, last week I sent an email to all students. It did not go to their Hotmail, Gmail, Yahoo accounts. It went to their Pearl River student account. So they need to log into RiverGuide and be able to access their student email account. And when they do that, they will find some directions. I know students have already received the email because I've already received questions from students asking for clarification. Some things are simple, like, tell me, is, my, is this an academic class? Yes, AMP is an academic class. Um, some questions, they just needed a little bit of clarification, but 
it's, it's pretty simple. Remember what I'm about to tell you is only for the first week of the semester, only. Okay. If your last name, now let me back up before I say it, I'll confuse people. What I'm about to say is only for the first week and only for academic classes. Okay. If you are in a career technical class or an allied health class, you go to class the first week just as it is on your schedule. But if it's an academic class, if your last name begins with A through L, you go to class the first day that the class is scheduled. If your last name begins with M through Z, you go the second day. Okay, now here's the confusion that I've encountered. If your class is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and your last name begins with A through L, you obviously go on Monday. If your last name begins with M through Z, you go on Wednesday. That doesn't mean you do that every Monday for the rest of the semester and every Wednesday. That's just the first week. The teachers are working very hard to come up with plans that will accommodate fewer students within the classroom, but also accommodate the needs of each student in the class. So if a student needs to have a job at a certain time, the teachers are working to accommodate those students. So the students know, need to know that they can go in that first week and talk to the teacher and the teacher will work with them and be flexible with them within reason. There's still times when the students will need to log in and be able to attend the lectures, things like that. So it, the first week may be a little bit confusing, but after you go to class that very first time, you will have a plan so that you will know exactly what the rest of your semester will look like. Great, and just to be clear, if they have a class that meets on Tuesday and Thursday, that same principle applies yeah. for that Tuesday, Thursday Correct. Class. The other question that I've received is what about if my class only meets one day a week? Maybe it's a science lab. Maybe it's a class that is already hybrid. Mm -hmm. And my response is, you go to class the day that class is scheduled for that first week and the teachers will help, help you and make arrangements. They will accommodate that situation. So go to class if it's just that one day a week class, whatever it is, make sure you're there that week in class. And email your teachers now, ask questions, introduce yourself, say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna be in your class this fall during this class period on this day, and say, I'm looking forward to it. Is there anything I need to know to be prepared? Creating a relationship with your instructors is always the first step to success. Absolutely, and, I, and we talked about this a little bit in our last session that now more than ever, communication is going to be so important yes, with your instructor. Yes, critical. Yeah, staying in communication, emailing that instructor, reaching out when you need help is gonna be really important this semester as you move forward with all of the potential changes mm -hmm. and what we're looking out for. Well, that's all the questions that we have today. I wanna to thank everyone for joining us for our Facebook Live. We really enjoy doing these. It feels like we're kind of getting to talk to you even though you're not here with us in the room. And thank you again for giving us all of the great questions that you supplied us. And thank you, Dr. Smith, for joining us. Certainly. Now, if you have any questions about general parent questions, so how does your student log into RiverGuide? What is RiverGuide? Should they be checking their email? Those types of questions, you can refer back to our first parent session that we held. And I'll link that below in the comment section. You can click on that and go view that video. We'll also link down below our parent website. You can go to this website to see tutorials, to see quick tip videos, and short blog posts that give you information about housing, admissions, financial aid. It's a really great tool for you to be able to use as you look forward to your student joining us in the fall. So we'll link all that down below. And then finally, if you do have any questions that we didn't get to answer today, feel free to leave those in the comment section below and we'll go through those one by one and we'll make sure to get you an answer before we get done today. So again, thank you so much for joining us and we look so forward to seeing your Wildcat in the fall 2020.